Hey everyone, welcome back to BuckeyeScoop.com's coverage of the Elite 11. Uh, another bonus podcast episode here. I am joined by Nevada Buck again. He's uh, joining me in Elite 11 coverage this week and, and as well as the opening this weekend. Um, day two in the books, uh, pro day drill. So simulating what your college pro day would look like in front of NFL scouts, making you matriculate down the field. You do some throws from the shadow of your own end zone. Then you move, you know, move up the field towards the middle of the field, and then eventually you uh, make a few red zone throws. So uh, definitely a different feel than uh, day one. Uh, Nevada, just your thoughts on the drill and kind of what you, uh, you know, your interpretation of kind of how that, you know, may have been better or worse than, than day one in terms of uh, what we were able to see. Well, you know, it was, a, it was a, it's an odd format in that you've got, you know, one quarterback going at a time. So all eyes are on them. It's a it's kind of a high pressure type of environment. And as you said, you're, you're moving from, from the goal line, moving all the way down the field, making all the throws and there's nowhere to hide. If you're, if you're off or you're, you're not sharp, then you get exposed really, really quick. And in the, uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the different quarterbacks became you know readily apparent and even, even more so than yesterday today. So it was, a uh, it was a fun session and certainly an, an illuminating one for sure. I like it just because um, you get to see everybody. Now, again, yes, you only get to see them go through it one time and then that's it for, for the entire four hour session, but you also get to see everybody. It's, it's much easier to kind of track everyone versus, you know, trying to watch three or four different pods and guys doing stuff at different parts of the field. Everyone goes one at a time. So for me, um, it's kind of a nice change of pace. I, I kind of enjoy it. Um, let's get to it. You know, the Quinn Ewers report. Um, I thought Quinn was probably a B yesterday, maybe. I thought he was good yesterday by his standards. I didn't think he was, like, amazing in terms of, like, his, his accuracy or consistency. Obviously, the arm talent was, was amazing, but th- that's always there. I thought he was actually better uh, today. What did you think? Yeah, I, no, I, I thought I, I thought Quinn was really good yesterday. Um, like I said, he looked like he was struggling a little bit with a with a blister on a finger or something. That he kept going over to get to uh, to have that adjusted. I thought today, obviously, uh, he didn't have any of the, the lingering effects of that. And you know, it, it was it was clear from the organizer standpoint that they were kind of setting this thing up as kind of a Malik Murphy versus uh, Quinn Ewers showdown. You know, the fact that they had Murphy go and then they had Quinn Ewers go right after that. I, that wasn't a coincidence. And I, I thought Quinn was outstanding. You know, I, I, I know that they have different ways of scoring this and um, I'm not sure if you finished second or third by their scoring from my standpoint, you know, I, I thought of the 20 throws, I thought he was on target and on time with 19 of the, of the 20 and, and uh, the, you know, the, I don't think the ball hit the ground during the entire time that he was a, uh, out there spinning it other than a couple of drops. I mean, he was really, really sharp today and, and really put some distance between him and, uh, and Malik. Now, now some other guys, you know, did well, but I thought this was really a, uh, really a terrific day for, for Quinn Ewers. And we got to see, uh, we got to see why he's so special. Yeah, he was, he was really good. Um, yeah, a couple of drops, um, you know, I've only, I'm trying to like replay the, the 20 throws kind of in my head. And I think, there, I think his worst throw was probably a completion. He had that throw down the sideline that that I think I don't know if it it, just, it clearly didn't come out of his hand right, and it kind of hung up in the air, um, and the receiver kind of was waiting for it a little bit. Um, that was probably his worst throw, and it was a completion. So, um, yeah, I thought he was I thought he was really sharp, and um, it was windy when he was throwing. I mean, I, I'm not gonna sit here and say it was only windy for him, but. It, the, the windiest part of the evening coincided kind of with him and one or two other guys throwing there. Um, the ball was cutting through the wind uh, really nicely. So, yeah, I thought he had a great day. I think um, when you look at everything so far, I think, you know, some guys, like I thought Malik Murphy took a step back tonight. Um, you know, I thought he was okay. I didn't think he was as, you know, dynamic as he was uh, day one. Um, so I think when you look at it overall, I think having two really good days, the way Ewers has probably puts them uh, right in the mix. I think the elite 11 people had him number two coming into the pro day thing. 
and he had a great pro day. So he's going to he's gonna be right there to win this thing. Um, you know, another guy I think we both talked about that we liked um, yesterday and now we like them again today is Drew Aller. What did you see out of Drew uh, day two? Well, Drew, you know, I, I thought Drew was you know, clearly one of the top five performers today. Um, I may might have had him even a little bit higher than than the people the Elite Eleven did. I thought he was really good. You know, moved wells, got the big arm. And he's got a little bit of a long delivery. You know, the, it's 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 not. You know, he's not. You know, w- w- with Ewers, you've got a guy who's like Mahomes throwing from all these different arm angles and just popping it out there and stuff. But Aller's got a little bit more of a, a, a longer wind up. But boy, the ball gets out of his hand nicely, and I thought he was. Uh, he was accurate and and composed and and really showed up, you know, showed a lot of arm talent and and um, I thought he really really had a good evening. Really really took a step forward today. I I thought this was a great day for the Big Ten. Um, you know, you had Ewers, you had Aller. I thought uh, the uh, Gavin Wimsett again. I, I thought he was good again. Was he as good as he was day one? I I don't know about that, but he was he was solid again. I mean, it's t- two really good days in a row. Um, and then Catton Hauser from Michigan State goes out there and puts up a, a great score. I don't. I think he was first or second. I think he might have been first. Um, he and he got in a, a zone, and we'll have some video of that. He got in the zone there. Those last like six or seven throws were right on the money. It was just crazy. There was like a buzz going almost when he was uh, finishing up the the drill because he was in such a such a rhythm. So I thought it was a great day for the Big Ten. I think you liked uh, Gavin Wimsett a lot, didn't you, uh, from Rutgers tonight? Yeah, I, I, I like Gavin a lot. I thought he, I thought he really had a, a good effort. I, I, I like Devin Brown from you know the USC kid as well. I thought he I thought he really played well today. And again, I'm not sure about the final scoring, but I know he had to be up there. But yeah, no, uh, Gavin was a, is, is a great get for Rutgers, and and uh, I liked him yesterday, and I liked him more today. And um, you know, at, 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 you know, had a little bit of accuracy issues there at the end of his. Uh, of his set and stuff, but you can see it all, all the abilities there. And uh, he's, uh, he's going to be a handful to play against these next few years. And as you said, a good day for the big 10 from a quarterback standpoint, there's, there's going to be some really good quarterbacks uh, up and down the league for sure. Yeah. I could, I could argue that maybe four of the top six or seven guys uh, day two in the pro day were big 10 guys. I just, it was a really, really strong showing. And yeah, Devin Brown was, was really good. Um, he got into a rhythm similar to Hauser where just he got it. He made five or six just perfect throws in a row. And it's like these guys feed off of that. They they make one or two and it just you, you can see it. It almost you know snowballs for him in a good way. Um, so I thought that, you know, happened with with uh, Devin. And I thought that happened with uh, Hauser as well. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, where you're at so far through two days, but. I mean, I, I got to think yours is up there. I got to think, uh, oh, Kate Klubnick's another one I should mention. I thought he, I thought he had a pretty good night. Um, I think they had him one ahead of yours going into tonight. I don't know. I don't think he was better than yours tonight, but I thought he was good again. So I would imagine those two are both going to be up there. Um, Klubnick, I think going to Clemson. Um, so that's going to be interesting there, um, you know, but, you know, what are your kind of your takeaways here through two days as far as like the body of work for some of these guys and kind of how you maybe see things um, going into this last uh, round of uh, throws here in the morning? Yeah, no, I, I, you know, after tonight, I've, I've got yours as the clear number one. I thought he was clearly better than you know, Club Nick. They had him ahead of yours, yeah, yours too. I think yours put some distance between him and, uh, and Club Nick tonight and, and you know, I like you. We talked about you know Murphy. You know Malik Murphy was somebody that I. I mean, I was kind of in awe of him yesterday. I mean, he was so good. And today, you know, he was he was okay. You know, he started out strong and then kind of ended, kind of sprained it all over the place. And as you said, it got windy. I mean, it did get windy. And you know, I'm very very familiar with Miracostal Field, and it, <laughs> yeah. it can become a wind tunnel. And it and it just every now and then, it, you know, for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, it'll just start howling. And when those two guys were going, it was blowing pretty good. So that can uh, that can throw them off for sure. But uh, no, I thought you know after the, the two days, I, I, I'm trying to take off my my homer glasses. But I think you know I've talked to a lot of people, I've seen a lot of different things, and I've got yours as the number one quarterback at, at this. And 
you know, I wouldn't have said that last night. I would, I wouldn't, you know, I didn't have him as number one last night after the, uh, after last night's sessions and after the, uh, the, the, the classroom stuff. But after tonight, I, I think he's the number one. And, and you, and you see why he throws such a catchable ball and, you know, put, you can just tell that in, in a game situation, he's going to put the ball where it needs to be and uh, give, give a guy a chance to make a play, you know, when, when it gets there. And, and, uh, I just, I cannot wait to see him at Ohio State. I just think we have a real gem there. Yeah, gonna be gonna be fun to watch him. Uh, certainly in Columbus, gonna be fun to watch him here this fall. Um, you know, see see what kind of numbers he puts up. He's got he's had such an unbelievable career at South Lake Carroll, and so hopefully, uh, you know, everything goes smoothly this fall. Uh, last fall was kind of a a clown show across the country with how. Uh, different teams in different states were on different schedules and everything. So some normalcy should help him as well. Um, you know, yeah, going to be interesting tomorrow uh, for day three. I think, yeah. I, I, do I think he has a monster lead? I don't know if he's a monster lead in my opinion, but I think he's, you know, I think he's got, you know, they're, they're making the final turn to head down the straightaway and I, and he's in, he's in front, I think. So um, you know, kind of one of those, I think he's teeing off with a one or two stroke lead. So, uh, going to be interesting, uh, to see how he, uh, performs tomorrow. I, again, uh, historically, this has been an accuracy competition. Um, the last morning, um, historically they, they get the nets out and the, the rings or whatever, and you're, you're thrown through the hoops and, and into the nets. Um, so that has historically been, uh, the wrap up for day three is the accuracy stuff. And so we will, we will see if they do that again. That that's what I would anticipate, but um, we'll see. I mean, um, you know, anything else here? Uh, we we covered. I think we covered a lot of ground here. We talked about the Big Ten guys, and we, we gave our viewers report. Uh, anything to add here before we uh, log off? Well, no. I just you know we've got the opening you know coming up, yeah. and you know that's going to be that's going to be fun to see them there in a seven on seven you know you know setting. And so tomorrow's. Uh, you know, busy day starting, you know, first thing in the morning with the, the final session of the uh, of the Elite 11, and then we go right into the opening. So, you know, the next 48 hours are going to be, you know, unbelievable. We're, you and I are going to be exhausted by the time this thing's done. But yes. uh, for the viewers, everybody stay tuned because, we, you know, you get, we're on commitment watch for JTT. We've got some other guys that may, may be popping here anytime. And we've got the final day of Elite 11 and uh, – and it's the beginning of the opening. So it's a, uh, it's a action packed uh, next 48 hours for sure. Yep. CJ Hicks, Keon Gray's um, AJ Harris. There's, there's, there's several guys uh, to, to watch here uh, this weekend for the opening that, that we'll be bringing coverage of. Uh, this is, this is the toughest transition here is, is this, we got the quick turnaround. We didn't have the quick turnaround uh, today. We, we had evening session, then evening session. But now, so we had evening session past 10 PM, um, and then t quick turnaround 8 a.m. For, for the morning session. So uh, we're going to uh, we're going to fight through here. Day, day three is going to be a grind, but we're, we're ready to do it and uh, bring you guys some coverage. So, you know, check us out on BuckeyeScoop.com, uh, Twitter at Buckeye Scoop. We're posting a lot of stuff from these events. Um, and then, of course, uh, wherever you uh, get your podcasts, we have uh, our podcast. Where we're going to do daily recaps, uh, continue to do that for everyone. And uh, BuckeyeScoop.com slash YouTube or YouTube, YouTube.com slash BuckeyeScoop as well, where you can find um, the videos we're putting up. So um, thanks, everyone, for listening. And uh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow with uh, a day three recap.